four factors have combined to change the traditional character of the Oregon hop industry. Downy mildew, mechanization of harvest, a reduction in the amount of hops used in beer, and marketing controls. In the mid-1930s, a fungus disease called downy mildew first appeared in the Willamette Valley hop yards and devastated the crop as no other pest or disease known before. The moderate temperatures and damp weather of the valley were conducive to the spread of the disease and Oregon's otherwise ideal hop growing climate became a liability. James Wynn of Albany tells of using copper sulfate to combat the disease. About thirties, I guess, that this down mildew they imported here from England mm -hmm. and uh, it was uh, it was awful bad. We had a, a small six acre yard over here across from mother's there and uh, I dusted that twenty times um, we had a good crop on it, we got a good crop out of it, but my, get up at 4 o'clock every morning and dust that, there was, and rain, every time it rained, you had to get out and, and there's lime and, uh, 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 bluestone, yes, copper sulfate, there's a mixture of that, but we had to, that's the only thing that would stop it. While research was conducted to study the disease and possible cures, Production in the state of Washington compensated for the shortage of hops from Oregon. Arid country, such as Washington's Yakima Valley, was well suited to hop culture when irrigated, and the dry climate was unfavorable to mildew diseases. Eventually, researchers discovered that certain varieties of hops were naturally resistant to downy mildew. But by the time the resistant varieties were determined, Washington was firmly entrenched as the leading hop-producing state in the nation. Downy mildew is the first of four important factors in the decline of Oregon's hop acreage. The second is mechanization. Mechanization affected many phases of hop culture, from plowing and spraying to drying and baling. But it was the mechanical harvester that made the greatest impact on the industry and reduced the number of people it employed. The search for an efficient mechanical picker goes back to the 19th century. Except for two or three years during the Great Depression, growers were always faced with the problem of obtaining enough pickers to harvest the crop. Mechanical harvesting eliminated the growers' concern about the possible loss of crop due to the shortage of labor. In addition, machines worked more quickly and cleanly than human harvesters. Thirty workers in a picking machine did the work that once required 400 people. The cost of running a machine and paying a small crew was considerably less than the expense of hiring hundreds at harvest time and providing accommodations. However, mechanization of harvesting was expensive. The majority of Willamette Valley growers did not have sufficient acreages and hops to justify or finance the initial expense of a picking machine. Herman Goshi tells of the difficulty of finding pickers and the expense of investments. And there just wasn't enough people. So this forced us into mechanization. And this also meant that people had to decide, uh, am I going to continue growing hops? If I am, I'm going to have to mechanize. And a, a stationary machine at that time cost uh, $42,000. And that was a lot of money in, in the 1940s. Uh, so uh, they had to have sufficient acreage to uh, to warrant this investment and uh, the other things that went with it. 
In the late 1940s, there were over 1,000 hop growers in Oregon. By 1952, there were less than 400. In the same period, hop acreage dropped from 18,000 acres to 6,000 acres. The expense of mechanization was partially responsible. A third important factor in the reduction of Oregon's hop acreage was the amount of hops used to flavor beer, a process known as hopping. Beer and ales were once much stronger in hop taste than they are at present. At one time, 12 ounces of dried hops were used to flavor each barrel of beer. The hopping rate was gradually reduced until only three ounces of hops were used to flavor a barrel of beer. The 75% reduction in the ratio of hops to beer greatly decreased the demand for dried hops. Federal marketing controls are a fourth factor in the shrinking of Oregon's hop acreage. The hop market has traditionally been very erratic. The market price of hops has fluctuated as much as 400% from one year to the next. The purpose of federal controls was to stabilize the market by balancing supply with demand. Controls were first instituted in 1938 to limit the quantity of hops marketed. Each year, industry representatives would estimate hop production and compare it with anticipated demand. A standard saleable percentage was then determined just before harvest. Because of the late determination, growers were unable to adjust by planting less acreage. The loss of 10 to 30 percent of a crop in this way forced a number of growers out of the hop industry. Later, saleable percentages were eliminated. In the 1960s, federal regulations were revised and base quotas were assigned to individual growers. The assigned base system offered a measure of protection to those who were able and willing to invest heavily in expensive modern machinery and trellis systems. In turn, the increased stability of the market has helped create a small but thriving multi-million dollar hop industry in the Willamette Valley. With approximately 5,000 acres in production, Oregon today grows 17% of the total U.S. hop crop, even though downy mildew, mechanization, hopping rates, and market controls have combined to change the character of the industry. Most of the growers who left the hop business turned to more stable crops. Most of the workers who once helped harvest hops turned to steadier and better paying jobs. For most people, the transition was uneventful. But the memory of the old days lingers, and the aging kilns that may still be seen near the traditional centers of hop production are nostalgic reminders of the industry as it once was 